Thank you. Uh, so I'm Martin and I will talk about our collaboration between Intel and Redis Labs on uh, re-architecting Redis on Flash. So without further ado, our agenda is, agenda is pretty simple. We're going to talk about two uh, things. Uh, Intel is going to introduce a new persistent memory technology and I'll, I'll talk about Intel's new persistent memory and then Oran will talk about re-architecting Redis on Flash to take advantage of this technology. So Intel is going to launch a new and very different uh, memory technology. Uh, it is going to be much higher capacity memory, much more dense. It will also be persistent, which is a very new uh, and radical idea. Typically, we're used to thinking of DRAM as being volatile. But with this memory technology, you do not need a power supply to retain data in memory. So you can think about very interesting use cases as far as fast restart time, uh, as far as per persisting your data structures in their native form. For example, you have some linked lists or B plus trees or whatever, and, the, and, you, and you power cycle the machine, and these uh, data structures are still in memory and ready to go. So some very interesting use cases there. It is also going to be cheaper than DRAM on a dollar per gigabyte uh, basis. This new uh, memory technology uh, is, was invented together with Intel and Micron and is a completely new storage media. In other words, the memory is not persistent because we put a battery on the DRAM, right? Or it's not persistent because we, we took a NAND or a flash and repackaged it as memory. It's a completely different and new media which has persistence as an inherent, inherent feature of the media. It will be very high capacity, so you will see with our next generation servers, a two socket server will have a six terabytes of memory, which is pretty huge. And it will be cheaper than uh, DRAM. It will also be electrically compatible with uh, existing uh, DDR4 DIMMs, so you can mix and match uh, how much DDR4 you have and how much of this new Intel persistent memory ha you have in the system within a certain uh, within certain pre-approved configurations, but you can mix and match. And the reason why you would want to mix and match is, even though this memory is, uh, is uh, higher capacity, it's persistence, and it's cheaper, it will be uh, slightly slower. Uh, it would be in the same ballpark as DRAM, but it, it would be a little bit higher latency, so you may want to keep your most critical data uh, in, in DRAM and, and, and some of the other data in this new memory. It would be definitely many, many, many times faster than SSD in the ballpark of memory, but still a little slower than DRAM. And as far as programming to a persistent media, we're used to thinking about doing uh, synchronous or asynchronous I.O. that invokes, invo involves an operating system call, it works on a 4K byte block granularity, etc. It's very high overhead. With this new technology, it's just like memory. You will do a load, loads and stores, and the CPU operates on it using 64 byte cache lines, just like memory. A little bit, one level deeper, when you, when you receive your server, when you get your server with this new memory in it, you will see the memory as another device and then another storage device. And then you can uh, format this device and you can mount it, uh, partition it, and you can start using it. You can use it as a SSD if you like, which it would be this kind of path uh, which says volume mode, uh, the first path there, which means you're just using it as an SSD. So it's like, uh, you can use your Ferrari to mow the lawn, but you, you may not. It's a very, very fast SSD. You can do that. Or you can use the other way, which with the right support, which will be available, uh, all the operating system stack will, can be bypassed and you will be able to directly interface with this memory using load and store instructions. And this is just a very simple illustration, like a hello world of persistent memory. Again, if you get your, when you get your system, if you do in Linux cat slash proc partitions, you will see your storage devices in the system. And you will see a new device called P1. 
PMEM0, for example, or PMEM1, so that's your memory, new memory device, you can partition that device, you can make a file system on it, and the new uh, feature that we are providing is when you mount it with DAX, which is direct access, that would allow for your software application to bypass all the uh, uh, system calls and all the software stack and interface with this memory directly using load and store instructions, uh, just like any other memory. So on the, uh, on the example on the far end, this is a simple C program. What it illustrates is how you, are, you open a file to this uh, path where you have mounted your persistent memory. Then you're allocating some space for that file and the third step, you're memory mapping that file. Now, once you've memory mapped that file, because the operating system and the drivers know that you have mounted it with DAX, with direct access, from that point on, any interaction with this memory is bypassing the operating system. It's direct access to this new, new memory. So this is just a very quick 10,000 foot overview. Tomorrow at the same time, uh, there will be another uh, 45 minute session by Andy Rudolph from Intel, who is going to talk in a lot more detail about the programming models, the library support, etc. And I'll encourage you to see that. But now I would like to uh, hand over to uh, my colleague Oran, with whom we've been collaborating to enable Redis on Flash for this new technology. So Oran. Hello, my, my name is Oran and I'm from Redis Labs. Um, we at Redis Labs created a product named Redis on Flash, which uh, uh, is a fork of Redis, of Redis source code, uh, which interacts with everything external just like re normal Redis, so it has normal Redis persistency, and normal Redis replication, RDB files, IOF files, everything else. But internally, it keeps the key names in RAM and the hot values in RAM, and the code called swaps the cold values to the flash. So um, it behaves like Redis, but internally, it saves portions of the data in RAM and portions of the data in flash. Um, what it does it is may, mainly allow you to uh, reduce the operational costs but if you have a very large data set. You can run it on uh, cheaper um, uh, machines with uh, less DRAM and more flash, which is uh, cheaper. Um, um, uh, what uh, the way it works in a cluster is, or uh, on a node, is that uh, each shard we see uh, multiple shards at the Redis logo has uh, multiple I.O. threads, and the I.O. threads are accessing the storage engine. Storage engine is embedded inside the um, Redis process. So each Redis process in the, on the node carries its own um, storage engine and I.O. threads that uh, do parallel I.O. to the, to the flash. Um, it, it works if uh, a client command arrives in the Redis um, figures out that the keys that it's trying to access are not in, in RAM, it will block that client, issue an, um, an I.O. request for an I.O. thread to prefetch that data before the command can be executed. And in the background, in, in the foreground, the main thread of Redis will keep a processing command of other clients that are not ac accessing uh, keys that are on flash. And, uh, Uh, I forgot to mention that the uh, storage engine we use uh, normally is the RocksDB. So there are many RocksDBs inside each uh, Redis process in order to access the keys which are on f the values on, which are on, on flash. So here we have a simple example of a few requests that come from, from this side into the shard. The requests are uh, distributed from that one shard into multiple I.O. threads which uh, go to RocksDB. In this case, the client is blocked. In the meanwhile, another client, the R1, tries to execute a command that is uh, on a key that is in RAM, so uh, it executed immediately from the RAM. And, uh, and eventually, when the, um, 
or eventually pretty quickly, when the um, values are prefetched from flash, the client that uh, requested them is unblocked and the command is executed. Um, this is the cluster view, so there's one proxy. The proxy interacts with the, uh, with the shards. Each shard has multiple IO threads, which access the, the flash. Um, so what, what we did now with, uh, with Intel is that we took the one, that one shard and we replaced the NVMe or SSD with 3D crosspoint. Um, we found out that uh, since 3D crosspoint is so much faster uh, co uh, than, uh, than NVMe, the overhead of uh, working with IO threads and, uh, and the issuing requests to, to IO threads and blocking clients and then unblocking the clients, it just doesn't work it. The, this memory is so fast, it's just uh, faster to simply do all the IO from, from the Redis main thread. So just uh, get a command, execute the command. If you need something from 3D crosspoint, you'll fetch it and, uh, and run the command. We also uh, found out that we better not use RocksDB, which is a very complicated, huge project. Uh, RocksDB works with uh, LSM files, and uh, it, uh, when it writes, it always writes to new files, and when the new files uh, uh, need to be later compacted and, and the data um, re-ingested in order to, to make it uh, faster accessible for reads and consume less memory, less uh, disk space. Um, for 3D crosspoint, we replaced RocksDB with LMDB. It's a much uh, simpler data store, which was originally designed uh, to use memory map. So it works perfect on, on 3D crosspoint because it uses web memory map over DAX, over direct access. Uh, once it memory maps the file, it just can access a 3D crosspoint directly and without any kernel paging uh, involved. Um, LMDB is, uh, doesn't, all, doesn't uh, accumulate any compaction overheads. It, it works as a bitry. So anything is directly uh, ingested within the right call and there's no cleanup to do later. And instead of, uh, I said, instead of using the kernel to access the files, it just access the data directly. And, uh, so that's all. To recap, so Intel is going to release a new memory technology, and Redis Labs is working with Intel in order to make uh, Redis on Flash utilize the benefits of that, um, of that new technology. And it will enable opportunities for huge databases to work at Redis's native speed, uh, save cost, and, uh, and in increase the data capacity. Thank you. Any questions? So every time I hear about 3D Crosspoint, it's in future. It will be available. When will it be available? Uh, when will it be available? What has publicly been announced is that it will be available late 2018. That's what has publicly been announced. So where is our um, flash? Uh, with 3D Crosspoint, uh, doesn't have much right? What? Can you repeat, uh, please? Our our app with three D S point doesn't have a multi thread, right? Oh, he's saying three cross point. Uh, Redis on Flash doesn't have multi threaded. Right. Yes, that's right. So the, the performance. Uh, I want to know about the performance. Faster. <laughs> it, it it is faster. I no. Detailed, uh, no. Not yet. Uh, is, uh, is it uh, available on Rice Labs uh, website? No, no. It's not, not yet. Not yet public. Can you speak a little bit more about the uh, integration of the uh, LMDB? Maybe uh, I know there's, there's not really a storage in API for this, uh, so I don't know if you were able to shed any light on that. I'm sorry, it's hard to hear from the other room. The integration of LMDB. Yeah. 
with Redison Flash? So, so Redison Flash uh, just opens each shard opens an LMDB database on 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 a file on the disk, and the uh, LMDB opens that file, allocates uh, space for the file, memory maps it, then the shard uh, issues LMDB. Uh, commands, uh, read or write commands directly from the main thread. It serializes the value if you need to uh, swap off a value from the RAM to the flash. It serializes the value and puts it, uh, writes it to LMDB. LMDB writes it to memory and in, because of DACs, uh, the direct access, there's no uh, kernel involved. So it is very fast. More questions? Okay, okay. That's RF on 3D is a pointer, support all the great local. That's RF on 3D is a pointer, support all the great protocol, such as Lua, Squibble, or in the Uh, couldn't. I didn't understand your question. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, ROF on 3D chart points support all of the Redis protocol, such as oh, all Lua. All yeah, Redis on Flash. It's, it's asked if Redis on Flash supports all of the Redis protocol commands. That's right? Yes. Yeah, so it's completely 100% Redis compatible. It's a fork of Redis source code. It supports all the Redis uh, commands, all, all the nuances. It's a uh, feature and bug compatible with Redis. So it, it's Redis. Everything is supported. Uh, this, this is a question for um, Intel people. I was wondering for the operating system, do you need like a special change for the OS to access your new position memory storage? Uh, yes, there, there needs to be OS support. Was that the question? Does o, is OS support required? Uh, the answer is yes, but at the time when this technology launches, uh, there will be OS support already present. And in fact, it has been, they have, it is already there, right? There is already kernel, I think 4.14 and above already have support for this. And uh, Andy will talk in great length about the different uh, libraries and support. Yeah, but they w it will be supported across OSs, all the major OSs, all the major uh, cloud uh, providers uh, we're talking to, and it will be supported. Excuse me. Uh, the one of the slides I saw that uh, easy to I instance is uh, mentioned. Um, is that that instance has this flash memory which is uh, introduced by Intel? No, no, you cannot use it now. Uh, okay. Only currently, that memory is available only with Intel partners under NDA to uh, to enable software. It is not publicly available yet. That that slide is about Redis on Flash. Uh, in the existing product that is currently av available. So, so your example shows that uh, using a flash on that instance, i3 instance? Yes, it, it's, it shows that Redis on flash on, on uh, EC2 can save uh, costs compared to Redis on RAM. For the existing product, product that is currently publicly available. What's the what's the latency for Redis on Flash? Is it still one millisecond or is it higher than that? It it can be one millisecond. It depends on your workload. Redis on Flash keeps uh, the hot values in RAM, so the hot values are accessible. Is it's in Redis Redis speed, and the, and the cold file values it depends on the depend on on the size of the values and the type of the value. 
but if your what we saw that there are many workloads uh, uh, there's a lot of data but uh, data that belongs to different users uh, is uh, accessed at different time of day data that uh, uh, for people in Australia they're not they're sleeping now so it can uh, serve uh, for certain applications it can serve everything from RAM and when the, the time zone moves or the data uh, workload changes, it adapts. Uh, it, it depends on many factors, I don't have any numbers. All right, last, any last question? 10 seconds. In the scenario up on the slide, why is there less EBS storage needed? for the Redis on Flash? Uh, this is not my slide, so I can't... Uh, is it irrelevant? So, um, I mean, so what, what, what he's showing is a typical configuration for um, a Redis deployment. For, 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 yeah, so, so, you know, so, so I, I forget what the, what the assumptions are in, in terms of the sizing for this thing is, but basically we would, we would typically deploy with EBS, um, and then the, the point is you can extend the memory of, of the host with Redis on Flash um, without increasing the cost as you would if you got a bigger box that was entirely DRAM. So the, the point of the slide is you're, ex you're extending the memory footprint of the host without increasing the cost the way you would if you got a much bigger box. In, in this uh, test, do we see the same performance? Or? So the... It, uh, with the Redis and Red, or Redis and Flash? So, so the question is, um, and, and, and we're going we're gonna to speak in, in very broad terms, the question is, would you see the same performance with you know, pure Redis on RAM versus Redis on Flash? You're going to see a bit of a performance hit with Redis on Flash, right? It's slower, memory... Um, um, the only thing that's held in memory is, or, or in the case of data that's been moved to, um, to Flash, the keys are still in memory, but the data, cold data, is now, um, is now on Flash, so it may have to be moved back. So you're going to have to pay for that. But what you're, what you're getting is um, still high-speed compute without increasing your cost for, for, um, to hold data that's just cold. And, and it depends on your workload. Some, some workloads will not notice that. Other workloads may, may have. So, so um, I think I've got I to gotta shut down the session, but happy to, happy to stand up here and, and continue the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you.